Valorant Champions, 16 of the best teams in the world, fighting for over $2 million, the Champions Trophy, and most importantly, being the best in the world. But none of that comes easy. With it comes triumph, heartbreak, heroes, and villains. This tournament promised to tell a story unlike any in Valorant before it. Because this year's Champions was different. It was the first iteration under Valorant's controversial partnership system. The game had risen to the status of a global phenomenon, with more eyes on these matches than ever before. And with the tournament being held in Riot Games' home city of LA, the stage was set for a spectacle. This video is the first episode in a two-part documentary telling the story of that spectacle of the players, the teams, and their emotions, and what it was like to watch it all unfold in real time. The story of Valorant Champions 2023. Every tournament has to start somewhere, and at Champions, that's the group stage. Four groups with four teams each, and two of them from each group qualify to the playoffs. Let's start with Group D, which for some stood for the group of death. Team Liquid were the winners of VCT EMEA, taking it over an otherwise dominant Fnatic back in May. They had one of the most storied Sentinel players in the world with Nats and Safe who brought immense firepower on the duelist role. Their first match would be against EMEA counterparts Na'Vi, which included four-fifths of the FPX roster that took Masters Copenhagen, along with a former world champion in CNED. DRX weren't to be underestimated either. A broken 5th 6th curse at last year's champions left them with limitless potential to make another run at the top spots, and they were still Korea's best team by far. It wasn't going to be easy for them though. Loud stood in their way, the reigning world champions from 2022, with a perfect mix of veteran experience and exciting rookies. But just saying that wouldn't really be an accurate description of these teams coming in. After all, there were reasons many said this wasn't the group of death, but instead the group of disappointment. Because yes, Liquid were the only team to have beaten Fnatic in 2023, but at Tokyo, it didn't feel like it. One win and two losses left Liquid fans feeling a bit empty, which was only made worse with a choke of a 12-7 lead against NRG. Fifth sixth wasn't a bad placement, but it wasn't great either, especially with the quality of players on this squad. Na'Vi had players of incredible quality too, but also couldn't bring it out in most of 2023. A group stage exit at Tokyo meant they were forced to scrape through EMEA's LCQ to even make it to champions, not a good look for the former Masters winners. DRX were struggling too after running into problems with their roster, subbing rookie player Foxy9 in and out during pivotal matches of the year, which left them looking completely lost, and Loud had been reported to have internal issues after going 0-2 at Tokyo, particularly between Les and Aspas, which fractured the team as a whole. None of the four were playing at their best coming in, that much was obvious. But it wasn't obvious who would be the ones to rise up and replicate their former glories. That would be the key to victory. Group B was objectively the weakest of the four. The only true contenders included were EG, who were coming off an unexpected run that culminated in a second place finish at Masters Tokyo. They'd gone from the meme team in VCT Americas to a team that was now the clear favourites in a champions group. It was almost unfair to put them against FPX, the lowest seeded Chinese team in the first game, but sometimes that's how it goes. FPX had promising players and a unique strategic look on the game, but it didn't quite stand up to the rest of the field. On the other side of the group, two of the regional third seeds faced off, Foot and T1. They were pretty similar in a lot of ways. Both qualified to champs through the regular season, both were eliminated in the group stage of Tokyo, and both had a great chance of making it to the playoffs from Group B. It was up to them to decide their fate. Could Foot overcome the pressure of LAN on their second go around, or would T1 become the second Korean team in years to become genuine challengers? Group C was the easiest to predict going in. Fnatic were the overwhelming favourites to win not just this group, but the entire tournament. That's what winning both major trophies in the year will do. With five of the best players in the world in red-hot form, it was hard to imagine them dropping many rounds at all. Alphia and Leo were the standouts in 2023, putting up huge performances that led to a near-flawless run in Tokyo. Speaking of Tokyo, Fnatic's first opponents would be Zeta Division, after they won the Pacific LCQ. Shades of their Reykjavik run showed in that tournament, with Laz dominating after returning to his signature chamber. The only problem was that history seemed to be repeating itself. At last year's champions, Zeta went out of the groups by only losing to its eventual winners Loud. That group also included Optic. You could certainly see the resemblance in the group a year later. NRG were coming in after a fairly average year compared to the course time on Optic, but a fourth place finish at Tokyo wasn't bad by any means. They still had the mastermind of FNS in the IGL role, and quality players across the board, which meant they were touted to make it out of this group in the lower bracket. 
Most people didn't even consider the possibility of NRG losing their first match, which was against the Chinese second seed, Billy Billy Gaming. Chinese teams were yet to really show their prowess, aside from EDG. BLG did have some interesting players though, particularly their judge-loving duelist YZ, so there was always a chance they could do some damage. And finally we come to Group A, the melting pot of aggressive, exciting Valorant. And you can't describe a group like that without Paper X in it, the team who defined aggressive Valorant. They've had a long history of pushing the boundaries of pro play, and weren't planning on stopping at champions. Taking out their IGL Benkai and replacing him with Star Duelist something at the start of the year was a statement move. They'd shifted to a more flexible calling system, with longtime members Forsaken and Devai stepping up to fill the leader's shoes, and it seemed to work wonders in Tokyo. Even without something due to visa issues, and playing with a content creator Gecko one trick sub, they clinched third place. The question now was just how good they could be with their full roster. There was no question on how fun they'd be to watch though. Crew was set to face them in Group A's first match, the team who was probably least likely to be at Champions a month before it started. They went 0-9 in the regular season, without a single win in the Americas League. But every team gets a second chance in the LCQ, and Crew didn't hesitate to take it. In a complete turnaround that can only be described as a miracle, Crew went flawless in the Americas LCQ to qualify for Champions. Paper X was a tough first matchup, but if they could carry their momentum through, there was certainly a chance for an upset. As for the other game in Group A, Edward Gaming took their spot as China's best. Tokyo was their breakout performance, making it to international playoffs for the first time with emphatic wins over Na'Vi, T1 and Loud. ZMJJKK, or more often known as Kang Kang, took the world by storm with his unthinkable operator plays and showboating antics, and everyone on the team had the potential to win rounds by themselves. It was easy to paint their run in Tokyo as a fluke, but it was clear to many that this was only the start of Chinese Valorant, and EDG were determined to prove it coming into this year's champions. They'd have to take down a fairly strong EMEA team in the process though, that being Giants, a fundamentally sound team with strong individuals and a great performance in the EMEA LCQ. Cloud clearly had the skill to become one of the world's best initiators, and Fatinho was proving himself as one of the top duelists in Europe. They were definitely a threat to Edward's dreams of Chinese dominance. If you like the music in this video, listen up. All of the music in this documentary is from the sponsor for today's video, Epidemic Sound. I know a lot of you watching make or want to make your own videos, and trust me, just go for it. But I also know how hard it can be, and an aspect of that is finding the right music. Not only do you have to find the right track, but also make sure it's copyright free, and that's not always easy. But that's where Epidemic Sound comes in. All you do is sign up for a free trial using the link in the description, and you can get access to thousands of tracks and sound effects, all copyright free use them in any video, and as long as you're subscribed when you post that video, you're protected. Yes, even if you get the free trial and it runs out. I've used Epidemic Sound since before I even started this channel, and to be honest, I'd recommend it even if I wasn't being paid to. Every track is professionally produced, and there's a huge range of stuff. It's got other super useful features too, like the Find Similar option, which has saved me tons of time, and being able to sort by mood and genre is really important. A free month of copyright-free music? There's literally no reason not to. Thanks to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video, and let's get into the groups. The first day of matches promised some intense games from Group D. All four teams were desperate to regain some past prowess, and we began with the regional rivalry. Liquid came in hot to this one, taking a 5-1 lead, but with players like Shao and Sagetsu, you can never truly count Na'Vi out. Close to the corner, trying to hunt down these kills, Sagetsu. He's holding his ground, and still the aim is sharp, isn't it? And as the rounds ticked up on their side too, it was CNED who came alive. Most of the season had been spent speculating whether he really fit this team, but there was no question of that here. And at 11-9 to Na'Vi, he was the one who sealed the map. It's almost perfect. This round is for the game. Completely overlapped. Where will the dice fall here? It comes down to it. A bit of RNG lighting up the bodies. It's even so far safe. He's ran them down and seen it with the operator. Sticking onto it. Rifle gained. Damage that still. Everyone's weak and they all fall down. Bind was up next and it was Angel who led his squad to an early lead. Liquid weren't going to go down easy though, especially Nats. He traded here. Over the top though. Nats is there. Yeah! Yeah! What? There's no way. This would be a legendary 1v4 if he was able to pull it off. He's got to force the fight. Tap of the spike. Will isolate one of them. Look at the positioning here. There's no swing really from it. And yet, the angle's so wide, it was unexpected. Here's the pit. It's online. One kill. And seen it. He shuts it down. That 
was getting scary. Eventually, it reached 9-8 with Liquid on a low buy. Could they pull a round out of nowhere to tie up the game? Sagetsu is going to have to put on a masterclass in terms of how he plays this. But he did hit both of them going through the teleporter, so he knows that spawn is safe. Gives him info. Flash to the back. Does he take the timing? The flash didn't lock on. He hits the jump out. It fades away. Force it to the 1v1. And Sagetsu with the breakthrough. His taps are just too clean. But Liquid weren't done yet and did manage to pull some rounds back. One away from overtime. Should be the finisher. Running through onto the site now, giving up control. Semblance of it, a tap onto it, not quite a tap, it's a full bloody stick. Nat half onto it with the smoke in his face, all the way through! That is ridiculous! For the overtime! It couldn't have gone any other way. Rounds went back and forth until eventually it reached 15 all. Red guys not set up. Yampi! He cannot respond and still... Rock solid. If Liquid let another one slip, they went into elimination games almost instantly. Was this final hurdle too high to clear? Oh, and look at it, he's expecting almost a push coming through into the back of the site there. It's traded immediately. Two versus three, Shao, he falls, Redgar! Are you going to be the difference maker? Still the crossfire. Onto the B-long angle, a tap onto it, it's a smoke, you have to force it into the spam. Redgar sticking it, I don't believe he got half, it leaves it to Yampi, into the 1v1! And time! It's against him! Oh, the satchel! The satchel half on it! Pushed away, is it bad? Well, shut it down, and Na'Vi move forward. DRX versus Loud was a clash of former titans, both trying to bounce back from a lackluster performance in Japan. Loud leaned on their individual quality for map one, producing insane moments like this from Cowan Zine. Got it too, he has been noted now. And there's the first, Cowan Zine! Clean as hell! Sprays! Oh my! Even so, it didn't look like it would be enough, as DRX clawed it back to reach a 12-10 lead. It had to be now or never for Loud. The buzz on this one, but it's going to be a brawl again. That blood bath that we've seen before, but this time too, he's falls. Buzz is going to find him first. He's got Marco by his side, and they're just going in. They want this one done, but Loud disagrees. Stacks, doubles down. It's a 1v1. Of course it is, and look who's alive. Aspas steps away now, spots the shoulder. RB's got to get a move on here, and the fight is Aspas. Aspas's incredible performance saved them from the brink and ultimately took them over the line on Lotus. A previous iteration of DRX might have mentally crumbled after this close loss, but at Champions, something had changed. Maybe it was because they were playing more freely than ever before, with some aggression unknown for a team like DRX. Maybe it was because they'd finally settled on a roster, only playing with their original five players since that loss at Tokyo. Or maybe they'd just been in this situation too many times before. Either way, they knew this series wasn't over. Marco played lights out on split only dying eight times in 19 rounds, with this 2v5 into 1v2 securing the map. Trying to bait it out just a little. He's got his TP and another one in pocket as well. Going to get closer towards this smoke, just goes up. They have no idea where he currently resides, so they consider the smoke. They certainly do. No they way! Go, go. They no go. way! Marco! Marco! Ascent was closer, but still DRX forged a path forward. Zest played lights out on the Sova, showing why he deserves Triple. to have a spot on this lineup. Oh, Zest! RB showed up too, always clutching in the pivotal rounds, and there's no round more important than the last. Buzz, this is still very doable! Louder holding on, but it's RB, the final boss from DRX! He has been a god for this squad, and he might just be again! Oh, he's still got the turret! Tui's is screwed, and I think he knows it! Pops down the smoke, he's toying with it! Oh, three bullets! It's all he needed! Three bullets to seal it! DRX, god tier performance! That set up a Na'Vi DRX game in the uppers, a storied oh, matchup that Stax had a few choice words about. Oh, they always talk about being lucky and them being unlucky, but it's just the track record tells you all, you know, about who's the better team. And we won't, of course, we won't let our guard down, but, you know, when we meet them tomorrow, I'll make sure that we crush them once again. But that wasn't the only thing that happened post-game. At the very same time, Loud's press conference was going on, but without Aspas. With rumours surrounding Loud's internal issues, many fans speculated that this was the reason Aspas wasn't there, and that it confirmed he would be leaving the team after their exit from Champions. Day 1's matches left Group D looking like this, and a few days later, it was time for Na'Vi to face DRX. Like I said before, a matchup with a lot of history. 
at last year's champs, it produced some of the game's most iconic moments and the longest overtime at a global event in Valorant history. Many hoped it would be a similar matchup here, and they weren't disappointed. It's just seen it, and it's just seen it with the op, certainly not the weapon you want in a situation like this, but he's gotten one. Is he gonna be what? able to get the second? Yes, he does! What a play from CNED! Unreal! That miracle clutch solidified Na'Vi's early lead on Bind, though they couldn't hold back the resilience of DRX, who brought it back slowly and surely. Overtimes aren't exactly an alien sight to these two teams, and of course, it went there again. We're going the distance! But in round 27, DRX's B hit was just too much. Map, point. Doombrush took a timeout for Na'Vi, could he give them the words they needed to bring it back again? You see the defenses for DRX crumbling, but Stacks with two. Trying to right the ship, trying to bring him back. Trying to put him down as Mako gets another. They just got the Molly and the ult here though. DRX still have to move fast. And they have no duelists to go with it. They have no duelists to take the fight to Navi's doorstep. It's all on Angel. Off of this you go, Seekers. The flash, there's Orbital Strike, Zets cleans them up, and DRX somehow claw their way back into the map and take a 1-0 lead. Unfortunately not. Also, Tarek was mad at Angel this whole game, which was hilarious. They have no duelists to take the fight to Navi's doorstep. What is Angel doing? Oh, it's first tap, Angel. bro. Off of this you go, Seekers. The flash. He makes Joe hesitate. Strikes, up, what is DRX Angel smoking? Somehow. Anyway, that brought us onto map two split which DRX looked great on against Loud. It would be a tough test for Na'Vi, but they rose to the occasion. No one more so than CNED. He's gonna get a second and potentially more. CNED's on the hunt! Oh, it was messy, but both connect! What the heck just happened? It wasn't even his classic op doing the work. He was just online. Messy, the paranoia out. CNED's able to get through. What? Bust by space. And now he's got the showstopper, but CNED stops it! A second two found on the sacks. I had seen it's gonna win this round by himself. Come hell or high water, he's getting the round for Navi. His performance took Navi to a pretty comfortable map win and the series to a third. Remember when I said these teams know overtime pretty well? It was bound to happen again on Lotus, and two 6 6 halves confirmed it. 12 12. What more could they do? How much more could they adapt? Whoever did would make it to playoffs. Off of the smokes, they try to get through, and all of that utility is just gonna be so much to deal with. Buzz killed himself! Falls to his own aid, but Zest makes it okay! Keeps him in it! DRX are gonna take a lead in overtime, and holy smokes, Zest, man. What a round from Zest. Navi backs against the ropes. They're gonna stun back out of this, on the back of the dart. Nothing to clear it either. Mako. I mean, Mako's in so much trouble, but Buzz! He's got the ult! I mean, they've wiped the floor with Navi! Final nail in the coffin! Putting him away, Buzz with three, DRX for playoffs bound! That tremendous win for DRX gave Na'Vi a heartbreaking loss. They still had a second chance though, against the winner of Liquid vs Loud. With Loud's apparent internal issues and Liquid's near win against Na'Vi, the EMEA team was certainly the favourite coming into this Reykjavik rematch. And then, the game started. Flash from on high, the peek out from Sadak, nothing found. Liquid have not gotten backside yet. They're trying to stay forward. Sada gets two. That's the spike. It's another disaster for Liquid. Everything falling to pieces and be it in the face of Nat's damnedest. He cannot do a thing. A 10-2 half for Loud and complete obliteration. Oh, with complete and utter dominance on Haven and a solid win on Split, Loud took the series 2-0 and eliminated Liquid in one of the quickest matches of the tournament. If there was one thing to take away from this game, it was to never doubt the world champions. Doubt still resided over whether Loud were fully back, but it was certainly a starting point, and they could attempt to fully prove it against Na'Vi. But on the other side, what happened? From the victors of EMEA, winning it against the best team in the world, to exiting champions in two matches and winning only 10 rounds in the final series. You can blame individual players, but Liquid seems to be cursed to never reach the heights their roster promises. There were flashes of brilliance with this team, but after the loss to Loud, it all crumbled away. The final match in Group D was a true war. Brazil's only hope against the former Masters champions, both back in form with everything on the line. It was an insane matchup to have as a group elimination game, but that's just how brutal champions can be. Map 1 was Pearl, which neither team had played at champs until now. A back and forth beginning led to an 8-4 lead at the half for Na'Vi. Loud are great at comebacks, but it just wasn't meant to be. Sadox, fault line. I'm surprised.
surprised he's held onto it. They're gonna stay on this. He's gonna stay back sight here, hope that no mollies come into his position to keep him away and cancel this lockdown. Oh no! Oh, he's gotta get no! away! He's stuck! He can't find a way out and he's dead! He forgot about the knife! 13-11 on Pearl. Ascent was up next, and another early lead for Na'Vi had fans questioning if Loud were about to exit with a whimper. He's already out on sight. He's gonna have to turn that flash. They know where he is. Epic leads him up, and it's once again a slaughter. But with five rounds in a row on their attack side, it ended an even half. And if you've watched a single game of Loud, chances are you know their Ascent defense is not to be tested. The duelist. I'm looking for the timing of these no commands and the lockdown Sadak up close. He might have just ended the round right here without using anything. Look at him go. Sadak with four. Give him the ace. Les steals it, but it's a prime gaming flawless for Loud anyway. With the America's crowd on their side, they stole back map two. Another 13-11, this time in the other direction. It all came down to bind once again for Na'Vi. Would they see another overtime? Rounds were traded back and forth, with the stars of each team alternately having life rounds. Less on the pistol, Angel on the bonus. Aspas, CNED, everyone was firing. The score was tied after 20 rounds of play. Two more for each, and it'd be overtime. Loud with one. With the judge! Les still trying to hold it back as Les gets two! Not three players one. here. Now it starts to flow, and they've managed to get openings. They've managed to get the space that they're looking for, and CNED gets two! He's got a judge, he's got smoke in his feet, he can tuck Wait. into, actually spams in it onto Angel. Reposition, weapon, grabbed. It's only CNED, a 1v1, and Sonok wins it out! Leading from the front, loud series point! A disastrously played postplant cost Na'Vi a crucial, crucial round. It felt like the fatigue of so many close intense games had finally reached them. A slight mistake that a championship caliber team like Loud would pounce on without giving you a second chance. And it was the end of Na'Vi's run. Trigger aching for the touch, and it's just a bit off. He's gonna ult, he's gonna go forward. Oh, he gets seen it! They're pivoting back to B! Sadak with the judge, and the second kill found! Is he gonna try to ult out? Yeah, he's going to safety, he's going to elbow. Oh! But he's stayed! The cancel! Sadak with the play! The savior for Loud! And now 13 seconds left, Shallot to get to with so much to do and all they can do is watch as the clock ticks away. The bell inevitably ringing, but they managed to get the spike down. Shallot 1v4, no! We've had the thrill in Manila, the rumble in the jungle, the slugfest in the shrine goes the way of Loud! Another 13-11. Against both DRX and Loud, they were rounds away from making it to the playoffs. In fact, they didn't lose a map by more than two rounds, and on average, they won 12.85 rounds a map. They came as close as a team could to top eight without making it. But instead, Loud moved on, and Na'Vi's year ended in disappointment. Group D was by no means the group of disappointment though. DRX and Loud qualified into the playoffs after some of the best group stage games of Valorant we've ever seen, looking reformed and ready to contend at the top once again. I think it's safe to say Group B wasn't as hyped coming into the tournament. That doesn't mean it didn't have some great matches though, and we started with Foot versus T1. The two teams were rated fairly evenly on tier lists and pickems, with no clear favourite. T1 probably had the edge, with questions over Foot's comfortability on LAN from a sombre performance at Tokyo, but this match quelled those doubts almost completely. Foot destroyed T1 on the first map of Pearl, dodging the 9-3 curse with step-ups from Modge and Cracks. T1 couldn't get anything together, and their lack of momentum costed them on Haven, where they lost 13-7. A quick 2-0 for the Turkish squad, who would go on to face the winner of EG versus FPX. There was some heat ahead of this game, as Bustio called into a league podcast a few weeks before Champions and dropped a quote repeated many, many times now. China will never be better than NA, for one, in Valorant. Ooh. Oh China's my god! Cool. China's three years behind, and I mean, if we play enough, they will not be, I don't think they'll be close to us. Now, of course, he then had to prove it. If he thinks China will never be better than NA, it wouldn't be a good look losing to a Chinese team in round one of the next tournament. He kept it going just before the game too. How many rounds are you going to drop? Um, to be humble, I think we'll give him eight. 13-4, 13-4. And that's humble, 13-4, 13-4. Well, there you go, you heard it from him. 
Well, he was right in some ways, as both maps were 13 8s for EG. A clean 2 0 win that didn't tell us too much we didn't already know. It was a respectable scoreline for FPX, considering the standings of both teams, but of course, when EG win, they don't hesitate to tell you. Demon1 continued with his signature teabagging and body shooting throughout the game, a practice that some people like, and some people don't, and someone, don't know who, expressed his opinion on Twitter about it. And now infamous copypasta, my tweet about Demon1, along with some others, furthered EG's reputations as the villains of the scene, the guys who would trash talk anyone and were determined to back it up. I may not have loved it, but it sure did make me tune into their games. And their next one was up against Foot to decide who qualified to playoffs from Group B. Most expected another EG easy win, considering this was 2nd versus 10th at Masters Tokyo. It showed in the first half of Pearl, with EG up 9-1, but that scoreline didn't tell all. Foot showed some signs of life despite the round losses, and winning the last two rounds of the half gave them a lifeline. And they took it. Onto the back of the site, the nade is in, it's forcing them out into the open, but they're just taking the fights, winning them as they go. The plan desperately trying to be found, it comes at the cost of Khan's life. Ethan left on the spike all alone and flooded by Foot. 11 rounds turn to 12, and somehow it's Foot with map point. Foot completely turned around the game. But could they really close it out? Captain still with a massive clutch in front of him. The first not even found, tagging up Bustio, teammates repositioning. Not quite. And at 14-13, Bustio decided that he was not losing this map. Nasty flanks, oh. this time his timing is near perfect and he'll catch two for his trouble. Now looks to maybe face back in the other direction, but he hits the shot anyway, just taking over this round. It took some time for evil geniuses. But their map choice eventually goes their way. Bind was close too, but Jorgamo put up a good performance on Raze to take it 13-9. Because now they should go rotating, <laughs> drifting towards that other side. Uh, oh, oh, it's oh. amazing from Jorgamo! I don't know if you'll see a kill like that ever again! Oh, man standing, and he stands! No more! EG will take themselves into the playoff stage as they 2-0 this series. EG had made it to playoffs with two wins from two, looking in decent form. It was yet to be seen whether they could replicate their run at Tokyo, but only time would tell. But one thing's for sure, they were definitely becoming the villains. Speaking of uh, shooting, uh, you, you've been shooting a lot of bodies lately, buddy. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been, been, been talking some smack online a little bit, buddy. So uh, how does it feel being the villain, the new villain yeah. of Valorant right now? Is it, is it something you're embracing? <laughs> mm, honestly, I don't give a fuck what you guys say about me. You can call me whatever you want. The elimination game between FPX and T1 was seemingly inconsequential, considering T1 had already lost a foot and were the favourites for this game, so it was likely both teams would be eliminated no matter this result. Of course, they couldn't go in thinking like that. This was both teams' final chance to make an impact to champions. FPX certainly made an impact with their Lotus comp. Viper, Harbour, Gecko, Jet, Killjoy. Not exactly orthodox, but then again, FPX didn't exactly play orthodox either. Primed and ready for this play. They haven't got the ultis to back it up, but over on FPX, they most certainly do. Thrash on his way. Destroyed out in the open immediately. Is that his position given up? They still want to commit to it, but this is where the pistols can be most dangerous already. Yukaw is going to be taken down, so two is wingman, but a good trade. The harbor op wingman planting, you've got to love it. Even though they went up 9-5, T1 did manage to wrangle back control of the game and take map 1 13-10. On bind, they hit back with a gecko of their own, and an incredible attacking half gave them 9 of 12. From there, it was an easy cleanup and T1 took the series 2-0, eliminating FPX. The lowest rated team went out as soon as possible. It made sense. They still put up a good fight in both series though, and left with their heads held high. And finally, the lower decider game in Group B, a rematch between Foot and T1 for a spot in the top 8. If T1 made the upset happen, they'd be the first Korean team past DRX to reach international playoffs since New Turn in 2021, and if Foot won, they'd be the first Turkish team to ever do it. And it definitely looked like they wanted it. On bind, they shut down Carpe's Gecko with their KO fade comp on a stellar defensive half, going up 10-2. T1 actually did almost make the comeback, but Foot edged it out. One more map to make history for Turkey. Back to Pearl, where they lost a tough overtime against EG only a few days prior. Surely history wouldn't repeat itself. Three on the side, side player, head first, flashed up, trying to stay alive, but you spoke about the blender, there it is! Two of the falling back to back, leaving Carpe and Munchkin 
It's okay. such an uphill battle, but they take the first step. The second! No way! Carpe out of his mind! With 20 seconds though. Look how close! Oh, Carpe! He's refusing to lose! Holding on so desperately, they found out a captain! He's taken one! Carpe! He's doing everything! One more to find! He needs an ace, or it's nothing! Plant goes in. But Moj moves closer! Oh, Carpe! Can you believe it? What a time to come alive for T1! And now there's a problem. T1 getting stalled out just a little. They need a pick, and they don't get it! A Fallen is coming online with three! Living it all down to Carpe! And this man went big before, but... This is a lot to ask of anyone! He's fallen! And Fun! The first Turkish team to make it this far in these tournaments, but my god, T1 pushed them the whole distance. Mr. Fallen pushed his squad to playoffs of champions, the first full Turkish team to ever make it there, following in the footsteps of players like CNED and Alfia. From the depths of tier 2 in 2022 to top 8 at a global event, they'd have to get a good playoff draw, but if they kept improving, who knows what damage they could deal. T1 had stayed consistently average throughout the year, and seemed like they hadn't quite figured out the formula to surpass DRX in Korea, but there's always next year. Group B pretty much went as expected, but the narratives building up around the two teams who made it out were interesting to say the least, they were true contenders. Two very lopsided matchups started off Group C. The first was NRG versus Billy Billy, two teams that probably couldn't have been any more different. NRG were arguably the most experienced team on LAN at Champions, and had proven they had what it took to take games across the line in high pressure scenarios on the biggest stages in the world. Billy Billy hadn't done that to say the least. Champions LA was the first global tournament any of the players had been to in Valorant, with their only offline experience being the Chinese qualifiers to qualify for Champions, where they came second behind EDG. Even FPX, the Chinese third seed, had been to lock-in, BLG were coming in as completely fresh faces to this level of Valorant. Their playstyles were extremely different too. NRG relied on outplaying their opponent in the macro game and capitalizing on those mistakes, all through the mastermind of FNS. That's what happens when you let daddy call. Billy Billy, on the other hand, much of their success came through their star duelist YZ, second in China on the roll to only the Operator King himself. Hero plays were common from everyone on the squad, relying on their individual mechanics and decision making to pull them across the line. In that sense, they were very much in the shadow of their big brother, Edward Gaming, who pioneered this style for China. There weren't many who debated the outcome of this matchup. It was widely assumed that NRG would take it easily, and anyone who predicted otherwise knew that the odds were not in their favour. There was a slight caveat though. NRG, especially when they were Optic, had a tendency to lose their opening game to an opponent they maybe shouldn't be losing to. The most egregious examples were at Reykjavik, the tournament they actually won, where they lost to Zersha in the opening match, and at Copenhagen where they lost to Guild. The curse hadn't reared its head properly in 2023 though, so many assumed NRG were safe from it under their new banner. That was a bold assumption. It started out as many expected, with this ace from Som in round 2. Problems for NRG, Som will be tested oh. here but... <laughs> <laughs> and a 5 round streak for NRG. BLG needed to step out, get away, and a timeout came in to help them do that. They still only had a low buy though, so the likelihood of this round going their way was minimal. Committing to that engagement, Finesse going to be played in on the other side of the map though, Yosemite will fall. Fall back, they're defending. In this position, there was seemingly no way for Billy Billy to win this round. It's a 4v5, soon to be 3v5, and they're going to have to retake on an eco. Inside Plays is. Ardis in as well, look at this. Oh, oh, hang on. A whiff from Ardis, but NRG still have this one in the bag. Som has a great angle on the box, and is yet to die in this map, 10 and 0. So, 4v4 timing there for Som. Just going to miss that little bit of a window. That's a little bit of a look back, but again, that smoke will be dissipating at some point. When does he take a peek? There it is. Spots out the player. The timing! Punished! This could be the first! This could be huge! Victor and Crash is in a 2v3. My Z just wants to get on the side. Now it's all on Crash. He's, he's fallen! Billy Billy finally drawing some blood. Never mind. Billy Billy got there first. And from there, they also found their Not rhythm. Not out of the woods at all! the last two, but they need more than that. A rifle, a Bianc on the swing! Heroic! Guys, yeah, what's this? Guys, come on now. now this is huge, right? This this is actually... Oh man, what well, a to come back to the same oh, oh. Round after round went Billy Billy's way, and they carried their momentum to get back to an 8-9 scoreline. But with two more rounds going the way of NRG, it was 11-8. 
Losing one more would surely doom BLG to the lower bracket. Oh, he's trying to clear on through. Does he spot them out first? Yes! Great find. Now just Bianc. Drop of the pit. Bianc still going to deliver. Oh, oh my oh, God! What a moment! Bianc rips him apart! The leader of Bianc activated in this map to give Billy Billy a lifeline. It was game on. From there, Billy Billy brought it back to 12 12 and overtime. From such an advantageous position, NRG were letting this map slip away. But they were no strangers to overtime. Sorry, Ardis slightly disconnected. Boombot goes in. Paranoid, not going to connect on that front line, so that's going to be easy work for some. But look at the back line falling. Oh my word, Billy Billy! Eviscerating three, bringing it back down to a 3v2, making a 3v1. Crashies lost alive, locked out from the spike. You can't really deny this they now. Swing on this. Look at it. There's a firing squad on the other side of Crashies. Desperately tries and fails. Hold on. There's no way this is happening. NRG losing another 4v5 and letting Billy Billy take the lead for the first time. Surely they couldn't actually do it. Two are going to see right now. FNS and I think Ardis are just. No, no, no. They're coming back and it was Victor who's going. Oh, okay, this is going to be ridiculous. And so now 25 seconds of 5v5 on the side. YZ goes down. Ardis holds the line, but gets traded. Okay, another clean man advantage for NRG. Victor with a paint show comes in. Som wants it on the action. Yosemite does get the trade out. Again, this is ridiculous. Down to two. Make it a two. Oh, Bianc! As if he's the one standing doing this. NRG stunned out of the server. Billy, Billy. Claiming map one. It was a stunning loss on map one for the veterans of NRG. BLG had brought it back from the brink to contend with one of the most respected teams in the scene and actually took it over the line. NRG weren't done yet though. That was Billy Billy's pick, so the next map of split would be comfortable for the NA squad. Another bold assumption. It was the IGL of Bianc who stepped up the most for Billy Billy on map one, leading his team through their international debut in the perfect way. But on map two, it was time for the star to show exactly why he was known as one. But keep in mind, why is he still has that judge? Some will get the divide off this. He's flying in. Connected. He's gone in. He's going to try and find some. Where is he? Says hello, gets him. That's ridiculous stuff. Why is he terrorized NRG on split? using the judge and the op to completely tear apart NRG's attack side. Excuse me? Excuse me? Sorry. No, 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 The timing, FNS, hello, look behind you. Someone turn around. Someone do something. FNS can't do enough. What are we seeing? They were destroying the mental of NRG, and Knight even took it out of the server. FNS, are you okay? Crashies did his best to save NRG with a great 1v3. Huge. He's desperately trying, and he's absolutely oh, succeeding! My word. But once again, Billy Billy turned an eco to regain the advantage. Look at this setup. They walk up heaven and then double stack close. Do they explore? Finesse is positioned all the way up towards heaven. There's no reason for him to rotate just yet with three moments of right NRG there. up. This Do close. Do they re-clear ramp? Do they re-clear ramp? Do... Oh no, 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 no. There's a trap, there's a trap, there's a trap. Some, some, there's a trap. Some, there's a trap. Turn, look, the flash of paranoia. Oh, it's devastating. Oh, it's Billy, Billy, bait them in perfectly. It catches NRG completely off guard and allows Billy Billy to match point. As a viewer, it was hard to believe what we were watching. And yet, there it was. Billy Billy Gaming, the second seed from China, were about to 2-0 NRG. Knight takes down Som, looks for follow-up, finding anyone. Why is he there? It's down to Victor, it's down to Artis. It's all that's left is Artis. And the unthinkable might just happen here. The true upset of the day. The upset of the event so far. Billy, Billy, besting NRG. So the first of two possible upsets in Group C had actually come through. Could the second? Fnatic, the favourites for the entire tournament, versus Zeta Division, the winners of the Pacific LCQ. It would have been an even more monumental result if it did, considering the last match Fnatic played resulted in their second trophy of the year, cementing them as the only team in Valorant to have ever won two international trophies in a row. The only major international impact Zeta Division has ever had is their third place finish at Masters Reykjavik, performances they haven't been able to replicate since. It truly was difficult to imagine Fnatic losing this match, and as it turned out, we never really had to. Six straight rounds for Fnatic on Fracture set them up for a smooth 13-5 win, Lazis Chamber had some good moments, but he was completely overshadowed by the wonder kid that is Alphier. He plays the sentinel role aggressively for a reason. His mechanics are incredible. Haven was much of the same. I mean, when Alphier is pulling off a 1v3 like this, you know it's over. Wait some time, but they're gonna crumble. Can Alphier do this on his own? He's gotten the first, he's gotta stop oh! the plant! 
But Alphier with a massive Red Bull clutch for Fnatic! By the final round, the crowd was chanting for Durka's ace after just two kills. In for Durka as he gets a second. Are, they, are you guys cheering for an ace? There's only been two kills! But Durka of course, looking for it all. he still got it. He's gonna have to push past the Cosmic Divide. The fourth and the fifth! The faithful shall be rewarded! Fnatic take down Zeta! It was business as usual for Fnatic, and an unlucky first matchup for Zeta. They'd go on to face NRG in the elimination game, and Fnatic would play the newly inspired squad of Billy Billy Gaming. But despite Billy Billy's unexpected result against NRG, Fnatic was still the overwhelming favourites here. They hadn't shown any signs of a dip in form against Zeta, and the individual players were still firing on all cylinders. When you're unequivocally the best team in the world, you're never not the favourites. And they showed why. World from him, Boast is in danger. Yes, yeah, stunned up, he's just trying to cower for a second or two, allow himself to come out of this, maybe find a fair fight. Spots one, gets him, spotted the second, he knows one's along, he knows where both of these players are. This is very doable! Boaster, the 1v1 now! Down to 46, but a potential! And he's read it, he's read it so damn well! Boaster's not known for his clutches, so when he's pulling stuff out like this on top of their regular play, it's not looking good for the opponents. 13-2 the first map finished, Fnatic perfectly dismantling BLG's defensive setups. Lotus was much of the same, albeit a closer affair, ending with a 13-8 to Fnatic. A clean 2-0 and a spot in the playoffs clinched. I don't think anyone was surprised. The question was now more about BLG. After getting destroyed in this game, would they have the confidence to beat their next opponent? Well, they didn't know who it would be yet of course, either NRG or Zeta could move on, and the loser would be sent home. Remember when I talked about NRG's first match curse? Well, there's two parts to it. The first is that NRG lose the opening series, which they did here against Billy Billy. The second is that they make it out of the groups through the loser's bracket, no matter what. Lose against Zersha and Reykjavik, instantly win both lower bracket games and beat them in the rematch, winning the entire tournament in the process. Lose against Guild and Copenhagen, beat Loud and Crew in the lower bracket to make it to the playoffs. If it was truly the first match curse, NRG would be all set to make playoffs here, beat Zeta fairly easily, and then run it back against BLG and take them down. The only thing left to do was test that theory. But to be honest, it didn't seem true at all at the start of Bind. Zeta's double duelist comp countered the chamber from NRG pretty heavily, and Depp was farming on the Neon. 2-2 quickly became 6-2, and NRG barely managed to put a third on the board. Momentum was riding with the squad from Japan, and they looked eager to get revenge for missing out on Tokyo. That was until... 40 minutes of tech pause ensued, with Chet even catching up on some missed sleep. When we went back into the match, it seemed like momentum didn't even play a role in the game anymore. It was so long to wait that it was practically a restart. NRG capitalized on that and managed to bring the game back into their hands. They took the lead at 10-9, but then Zeta found some new life through their IGL. Shots are rattling and hitting. It's three so far. Can he make it four? All the way to the side. ADS, eight bullets left. That's the ace. Laz. That's what dreams are made of. And eventually, the map reached 12 all, but NRG were not going to lose another overtime. Three players waiting for them, it's just impossible for Zeta. The flash, there's the connection, but it's all sprayed down, and NRG gonna be leading that series. Unfortunately, it felt like letting Bind slip meant that Zeta's chances against NRG were over. They didn't put up much of a fight at all on Haven, losing it 13-1, and NRG were back. The one round Zeta did win was a crazy ace from depth though. Barely a timing here, and look at the util Whoa! dump all the way through! Depp, no way! That's four, the fall! Now's the time to go for the ace! Man. Insanity! And the ace! Holy! It's over in a flash! An FNS masterclass solidified Zeta's flights home, and the end of Japanese Valorant for the season. It was a shame to lose them so early, especially considering the two teams they played and the strength of this group for the second champions in a row. But to be the best, you've got to beat them. That left us with the final match in Group C, a rematch of NRG versus Billy Billy. You know what I mean? That we ain't losing to Zeta, we ain't losing to Billy Billy again. Trust me right now, <laughs> we'll be in playoffs and we're gu I guaranteed, I promise you that. The NRG guarantee. According to them, there was no way they'd lose this game. But we're going to leave that match for a second and come back to it in a bit, after going over the final group, Group A. Paper X vs Crew was a game from hugely different circumstances. On one side, the team with their star jet back after getting third at Tokyo with a sub. On the other, a team that went 0-9 and nine during the regular season, but just when everyone wrote them off, 
managed to make a miracle run through the LCQ to end up in LA, which is where they've been playing all season, but anyway. Paper X had the upper hand coming in, but could they really stop Crew's five match win streak? Definitely, as long as they had fun. And boy, did they. Pop shot, just a warning to let him know what's in play. Oh. There it is, right into his face, and the shorty drops him. 73 HP, and he's going in for more. A second, perhaps a third! Something finds it! Something and Jing were styling on crew in the first map, and took it comfortably 13-7. Pearl was up next, and the Pacific team's momentum was just too much. What seemed like an instant 8-0 lead sealed Crew's fate. Although we can't forget about this insane clutch from Kesnet with the op. Not able to land the shots on the first blade, not aligned, but that op's going to He has next. one more! He's got one blade, and the op! Oh! Kesnet with the shot to inject some life into the Latin American representatives. Despite that, PaperX would take it 2-0 over Crew and move on in the upper bracket to face the winner of EDG versus Giants. Chinese Valorant was a region where the hype was at an all-time high. That was for a few reasons. The game had finally officially released, giving over a billion new players access to the game, and at almost the perfect time, Edward Gaming had their breakout run at Tokyo, creating superstars in front of the viewers' eyes. Of course, the main character of that story was Kang Kang, whose flashy playstyle not only flaunted his incredible mechanics, but also brought his team to new heights. His unique personality made him one of the most likeable players in the scene, and so many fans, even from outside China, were determined to see him succeed. By default, that typically made their opponents the villain in any given matchup, and that role fit Giants pretty well. Winners of the EMEA LCQ, Giants were in great form and weren't afraid to try and match EDG on an individual level. They might not be as flashy, but their skills were undeniable, and they came into the match with a lot of confidence. EDG, they're overrated. There's teams out there that has proven that they are like a top four, top five team consistently. And then seeing, for example, EDG getting that praise, instantly top four, top three, blah, 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 yeah, blah, 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 do all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't think Kang Kang would have enjoyed hearing that. And so Giants set out to prove as much with a full crowd rooting against them. Not afraid to copy other team strategies and make them work for Giants or even come up with their own ideas, their own compositions, their own strategies and counters. It didn't seem to affect them though, as they took an early lead, turning some rounds that looked unwinnable. Aware of it! Hold on! Shuts that down, but the Util out in their hands, and they are putting the squeeze no right way! onto them. No way! How on earth has he done that? That is ridiculous! 9-3 was how the half ended, with EDG looking uninspired against the camaraderie of Giants. But if they were going to come back, it would all start with a pistol. But EDG finally getting into it. Double satchel over the top! Right into his face! Nuki did not stand a chance, but they still need to get into the side and get this planted towards the backside of Elbow. Ryan will Down to all these timings and a sense of it. They just miss each other still. Plays towards screens. Kang Kang! Four kills! Give the people what they want. Hoodie spotted from the top. Will he get more? Not quite! It's the ace in the pistol! That was probably the perfect pistol round to start a comeback for EDG. And after winning the bonus, it really was on. A few rounds later, and it was tied at 10 all. Three more rounds to take it. His position was noted. Here's a flash play flooding right back in. Giants are coming at them with a vengeance into the back of the side. Kang Kang! It's the last one left here. The adjustment, the flick, but he's got so much to do! And then enough resources. He made a bloody good go of it, though. If that 1v4 had come off, you might as well have just called the match there. But it didn't. Match point for Giants. Could EDG hold on? Off the side, nothing to really clear this one out. They don't have the util from the raise. Kang Kang went down earlier! 2v5. It was over. Anuki! What a player he is! Neural Thefts out! Nobody! He's gonna try and salvage this! It's two versus two! And time still available. How long though? He's running. Does not know that Cloud is close. And here's the trailblazer. Nobody's done the most here, but can he do even more? Left. It would have to be incredible. Doubled up Giants, leaving no gaps! But as I say, that's six bullets! Nobody is an animal! Just listen to that crowd. But they weren't there yet. 
Giants still had one more chance to close it out before OT. The battle take place, aren't we? Out towards it. Risks need to be taken. Patino's pushing into them. There needs to be the trade. There is, but it's back up. Giants have stacked this one. Hard and fast. Kangang's only got the judge, for God's sake. Caught into the corner. The Cloudburst and the Nade trying to bail him out with the snake bite. But it is all over the place. Pandemonium at its core. And it's left down to this. Players are done. Damage is done. Can they collect the kills? Cloud was too weak. It's a scramble. It's absolute chaos in the final round of regulation. Two versus two, though. Not pulling the punches. There's no disguising where they are landing. Hoodie, 22 health. He gets a kill. Spike dropped down. It's all up to Chichu. Overtime or a map win for Giants. And Giants more than favored now. Set up for it. They know where the spike is. Nasty shot. Not Doesn't again. know where Hoodie is. No gun picked up. Or placed up. He has time. 40 seconds. And slow it down all the way. Oh, it's dropped! And Chichu! It's the back to back. Red Bull clutches. We are going to overtime. Giants won the first round of overtime with a perfectly crafted B side take but the next went to EDG after another 4k from Nobody. Then another for Giants. Could Nobody step up one more time? Nobody's job. Spot out the setup. See if you can see where the camera is. Doesn't see it through the wall. Nuki, it's an off angle. He sees it away! Reaction to the side. Nobody's there! Oh my and god. Nobody is here to stay. The A side is his. The call is made, but guess what? No intention of EDG. They've contacted all the way through into this B main. It's still being watched for Giants! have absolutely called him out in the open and nobody left again to do so much. He would have to ace to keep the map alive. Can he do it again? Surely there's no chance in hell. Seeker's pointing into a direction, opens it up. 1v1, where's the last player at? Seeker pointing him towards it. Into new box, 14 bullets, but still 30 health. And Fatinio finishes the job. Not quite. Giants desperately held on to take a 1-0 lead in the series. But with EDG's map pick next, could they really keep that grip? The momentum was in their favour with a pistol round win, and they went up 4-1 after this anti-eco. Only Haodong left to find. Just off, I mean, there's an ult in the back pocket, but Haodong does not look to expend it. Not worth it in a round like this, is it? Gained, and look at this, Min Maxing. Just trying to hunt out these guns. Vatino actually committing it. Oh Damage is done. Orbital strike, though, in response. And yeah, that's cleaned up. Still have... No time! No time! time. Oh my goodness, no way! Never mind. After that miracle clutch, EDG had more confidence than ever. The map was dominated by Kang Kang's chamber, an agent that made opping as easy as possible. You're going right into the moor, because Kang Kang is still watching! And do you dare encroach on his territory? Giants no just hit the opposite side. There's no way. In the smoke with the no scope. And with this from nobody in the next round, the map was practically already done. 13-11 it finished, taking the series to ascent. Response to this almost like they're realizing it. Yes, they do. They've just absolutely intentionally wandered into the trap here. You still being used though, Cloud trying to hold it close to the corner. And the damage almost done here, but it's left up to Haldon. He grabbed two. You can hear the footsteps. Spike in his hands. Oh. He is fully blinded up. I That's took out perfect. one of his eyes. He can hear it now. Close. Down. Where's the trade? Not in sight. How Dong. And immediately, it was the perfect start for EDG. Every crucial fight was going their way. The I mean, just look at this. To clear the way. How Dong falls. It's Kang Kang. Opportunities granted to Smoggy. He just can't quite hit it. Jiju! No way! The ace denied, but he's done enough. Has he? Nuki! Has he indeed? To the one-on-one. -on -one. Critical, crucial, but he doesn't expect it. Nobody brings him to 12. It was the hero's time to win and the end of the story for Giants. 2-1 EDG won it, but it was one of the closest games at Champions up to that point, and Giants had proved themselves worthy of the Champions stage despite the loss. With that result, the next match in Group A would be the highly anticipated matchup between two of the most exciting duelist players of this year, Kang Kang vs. Something, Edward Gaming vs. Paper X. This was actually a rematch of Champs 2021, when neither Paper X or EDG made it past the group stage. But here, at least one of them would be guaranteed to, as winning this would grant them a spot in the playoffs. With many calling Paper X second favourites for this tournament, and the difference between how each team won their first matches, 
It wasn't too surprising that they started the map off with an 8-4 half. Winning the pistol and bonus put them up 11-4. It would be quite a task for EDG to come back from this one. But ironically, this was exactly the score in Tokyo when PaperX made a comeback on Fracture against EDG. So they'd definitely seen it happen before. Some decent information here to PaperX. Oh, where the players are and standing, Kang Kang. Wants to really make a go of it. And it's more than that at this point. Two kills. Blaze Storm refreshed. Teammates feeling just empowered entirely. <laughs> they have shut this one down. Unfortunately, though, no heroics were enough to bring them back on map one, and PaperX took it at 13-7. Something was on breach on Fracture as opposed to a signature jet, so we hadn't seen the direct head-to-head -head between him and Kang Kang, but on Pearl, we would see it in full force. Kang Kang won in the first half, with a strong attack from EDG that gave them a 7-5 lead, and with the pistol and follow-ups, it looked like we'd be sent to bind to decide it. That was until PaperX refused. Thank EDG overstepped themselves, but they're all reloading! And it's prime for the taking! An ace from Jin kickstarted their momentum, and suddenly something came alive too. Their venture! Kang Kang falls! It's PaperX in control! Lovely response, ready for it! And something Whoa! in their faces! Here I stand! He screams it at them! They'd clawed it back from 11 6 down to bring it to overtime. You to the clear rim inside. Come jump in the dash. It does not work out. Smoky. He shuts that down. One avenue, not watched for, but still the wall allows them to cross. Stun is there. Out in the open. Paper Rex. It's all forsaken. This position's got to be known. Sees no connection. Spam through, but a crossfire is too damn good. And it's Paper Rex completing the run back. They're making playoffs in a 2-0 fashion. The Kings of Pacific were in the playoffs, finally avenging their group stage exit at Champs 22. That left EDG to play whoever took the win between Crew and Giants. Crew were desperately trying not to lose their momentum from the LCQ, and Giants had their own momentum snatched away from them by EDG, but one of them had to push through. They were pretty evenly matched across the series, with Davies and Kesnet stepping up in both maps. Unfortunately though, it wasn't enough to win either one, and Giants moved on with a 2-0 for the rematch against the Chinese squad. Crew weren't really supposed to be here at all, let alone putting up solid performances against this calibre of team, so credit to them for making that incredible LCQ run in the first place. It was the end of the season for them, but not the end of Group A. The final day of the group stages, and the first day I was there in person. I met with Bodork, my companion for the trip, and we secured our media passes to get access to the press room. Ever wonder where the press conferences happened? The venue was incredible, and had an electric atmosphere before any Valorant had even been played. And that made sense. Two excellent matches were on the cards. The EDG Giants rematch, and the guaranteed win for NRG versus Billy Billy. If there was a day to be at the Shrine, it was this one. a little bit more cleanly last time, but both teams had incredible attack sides, and that's why EDG, they've opted to start there. And it turned out to be a good choice. Round after round went their way, only dropping one of the first ten. It seemed like nothing could go wrong for them. Nukia has to find Chichu, the plant coming in, he's gonna have the info, it all comes down to this fight, and Chichu wins! EDG round after round! And when Kang Kang gets his eco frags, you can't help but cheer. And that's exactly what's happening here. Rhyme will at least manage to get one, but Kang Kang is styling! His third kill of the round, 11 3 in the lead. And if it doesn't start now for Giants, it doesn't start at all. Yeah. But the round that summarizes not only this map, but the whole series is the final round of split. Up, and it looks like the side of EDG might have to do it in the next. Because they're not oh, really in a position that. here. He's still going for it. He believes in himself, but I can see why. Already managing to clear out Cloud. Smoggy up top is going to put it into 1v2. And this is the man you'd want in that scenario. But both players up above. A flash ready. Oh, oh, it. What? <laughs> Truly unbelievable! A miracle clutch from Kang Kang, but he does it so often, I don't know if we can even call them miracles anymore. EDG went 1-0 up and Fracture was next, but the map switch didn't matter. They kept rolling on, with an 8-4 defensive half to put them on the brink of making playoffs. 
This pistol was Giants' last hope. Away, another player comes up and around. Hold on. Now the last man standing. It's Chichu. Oh. The defuse already halfway. The smoke blinding him, and he might not get a chance. Never mind. They've lined up, and even the body block was not enough. A Red Bull clutch for Chichu, and Giants' hope seems to be going down the drain. Definitely can't call the miracles anymore. And at 12-7, Edward Gaming oh made history. Oh, what? 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 It's just absurd. Even continues the push. Nobody is taking over. Giants haven't put up as much of a fight this time round, but were worthy opponents nonetheless and went home with the respect of the fans. EDG had managed to overcome the villains of Giants in their heroic story. Just how far they would go from here was unknown, but the matches were sure to be incredible. But we didn't need to wait. There was already one going on as EDG left the press room, Billy Billy vs NRG in the fated rematch. The storylines wrote themselves. With Ardis guaranteeing a win and NRG's lower bracket mode activated, it would be even more impressive and hilarious if Billy Billy managed to beat them again. Going into bind, it was clear that this game wouldn't be any less hectic than the previous matchup. Oh, and he still is. Isolates Victor comfortably, and yes, Ardis is drawing their attention, but it is still going to be towards this B site. So it all falls towards the IGL. Bianca has to be absolutely paramount. Bianca's taking down Ardis, so they can all turn attention. And he looks towards Long, takes down another. 1v1s, he's winning, but NRG takes the site. Just about to get the plumb, but look at Rin flying out of the smoke. Song's ready for it. Catches one out a second. NRG clutching onto the game. This is on a nice edge, though. NRG had the upper hand in the first half, and with a 9-5 lead, seemed to have it under control. YZ had something to say about that, though. Night with three, though, to deal with. That's so many, an infinite win! Oh! YZ eviscerating three on elbow, breaking him, and look One at the flag! The 70! Stabs him in the back! Billy Billy cleaning up here! That play kick-started a streak for Billy Billy, which was only answered six rounds later. 11-10 to BLG. Could NRG find the answer to win this map? A couple of steps critical to this crash he's trying to play through first. Gets to the site! He's got the one! Effortless with another! But Yosemite has been monstrous! There's no way! I walked into the arena just after this round at 12.10. It was a pretty unreal feeling. The next time the Billy Billy players sat down in their chairs, they would have the chance to qualify into the playoffs of champions. To do what many saw as impossible when seeing their group for the first time. Five players who had never played at an international event before, reaching top eight among legends of the game. But Billy Billy didn't care about legends. They were creating their own. And energy doesn't have much. Welcome to the chaos. You got a paranoia, you got flashes, you also got bodies on the line. FNS to Victor. Don't care though. They're holding a back canine. Oh, RYZ! Not again! It happens again and again, and now Crashies tries to keep cool, tries to wait, but he's been found! Hunted down! Billy Billy breaking in RG's hearts! See, and look at that confidence building. I mean, even in the interview, discussing momentum, confidence, being able to do this sort of thing. Jeez, that's oh, cold. That's so sick. That's cold. <laughs> and the final thing to do was send some of those legends home. So close by to this. It's got to fall from ZT. 
team, but you can see the temptation. It's calling him forward. Biang's going to be under pressure. Does he get away from this? He does. Oh. He's NRG left champions feeling humiliated. The team they said had no chance against them. The team who had no experience. The team no one believed in had 2 owed them twice. Their first missed playoff since Champions 2021. It did not feel good. But at least they had a short ride home. With that win from Billy Billy, the eight playoff teams were secured. Two from EMEA, two from Americas, two from Pacific, and two from China. You couldn't have written it better. The playoffs were bound to be packed with matches that defined a new era of Valorant, but that story is for next time. Thank you so much for watching this video. The next part will be out in mid-October, so please do keep an eye out for that one if you enjoyed this. It will have much more footage from the event, and of course cover that insane playoff bracket. If you've watched this far, I really appreciate you. And please do subscribe, it helps me out and is completely free. I've been Commend, hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching.